If you've recently bought some new filament and the print doesn't look quite right, there's a good chance that you can optimize your print by using a temperature tower. If you're interested in knowing how to do this, stay tuned. Okay, so let's say you just bought some new filament and you tried printing it out, but the print doesn't look quite right. Assuming that your printer is perfectly functional and that you've had a successful print with other filaments, there's a good chance that the reason your print is not turning out as expected is because you're printing at the wrong temperature. And this is where a temperature tower comes in. Essentially, a temperature tower is a tool for optimizing print settings when using filament-based 3D printers. So when you buy a spool of filament, you'll generally find the manufacturer's suggested print temperature pasted on the side. Typically, this is given as a range and will be between 220 and 180 degrees if we're talking about PLA. Now, this is quite a range. And the reason for this huge range is because the manufacturer of the filament has no idea what kind of printer the filament will be used on. The configuration of the printer will have a significant impact on the way that the filament will print. So basically, it's up to the consumer to figure out the ideal temperature for the filament that will work with his or her 3D printer. Now, of course, one way to figure this out is by printing different objects at different temperatures or by just guessing what will probably work the best. But this is hit and miss and may not work all that well. More importantly, even though you may get decent prints using this method, you will definitely not get the best prints possible. So a temperature tower is an easy way to quickly figure out the ideal temperature for any given brand of filament that you're using. So how does a temperature tower work? Well, typically temperature towers have different zones for each temperature rated for the filament. And using your slicer, you can change the temperature print parameters at specified layers. Now, normally, the highest temperature is tested first so it'll be at the very bottom of the temperature tower. And as the layers move upwards, the temperature drops by five degrees per zone. The trickiest part of printing a temperature tower is configuring your slicer to change temperatures for the different zones. And this is what I'm going to show you using a simple script and a plugin for Cura. So let's open up Cura and set up a temperature tower. All right, so what we want to do is set up a temperature tower. And in order to do this, we'll need to install a plugin in Cura. And we do that by going to Marketplace and then installing a plugin called Calibration Shapes. So we go down here and we find the plugin and we install it. So click Install and uh, you'll have to of course agree to all the legal stuff say agree and then you'll have to restart Cura in order for the plugin to take effect so quit Cura and then restart it and once Cura restarts you'll be able to use uh, the plugin what you'll notice is that there is a new option in the menu under extensions called part for calibration and what you'll find here are a series of different parts that you can use to calibrate your printer now the part that we're looking for of course is a temperature tower and you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different temperature towers and you need to be careful to choose the, the right one. Now in my case the filament that I am trying to calibrate prints at a minimum temperature 
of 190 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to choose the temp tower 190 degrees. I'll click on it and it will put the temperature tower on the build plate. The next thing that we'll need to do is add an extension that will modify the G code. And so go to extensions, post processing, modify G code. And you'll need to click on add a script. And if you go down to the bottom, you'll find an option for a temp fan tower. So click on that. And that will add a script that will modify the G code. Now, what you see here are fields that will basically tell the printer to change the temperature at certain parts of the temperature tower. And we'll have to figure out what the numbers are here for our particular temperature tower. So the way we do this is by closing the window and then slicing the temperature tower and then going to preview. The first thing that we'll need to do is figure out how many layers are in the base of the temperature tower. So go to the slider here and go all the way down and then go up layer by layer by going to the up key on your keyboard and just going up layer by layer. So one, two, three, four, five. So at the fifth layer, we start the first zone of the temperature tower. So what we have to remember is that we have five layers essentially at the base of the temperature tower. The next thing that we'll need to do is go up to the very top of the temperature tower and figure out how many layers are in the temperature tower in total. So we have 295 layers. So what we'll need to do is take 295 minus the four layers that are at the base of the temperature tower. So that leaves us with 291. And then we'll have to figure out how many layers are in each zone. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zones. So we take 291 and we divide it by seven. And the result of that is 41. So we know that we have to change the temperature every 41 layers. So we go back to the script and then we change this according to what we figured out. So the starting temperature is going to be 220 degrees. That's fine. We're going to change the temperature every five degrees. So we're going to subtract five degrees every 41 layers. So after 220, it's going to print at 215, 210, 205, et cetera, et cetera. Now the change layer option is what we need to fix. So here it says that it's going to change the temperature every 52 layers, but we've determined that it's going to be every 41 layers for our particular temperature tower. So we put 41 here and then the change layer offset is five because the base is made up of four layers, but then it will change on the fifth layer. So we leave the change layer offset at five. And now we close this. It's now ready to basically be printed. The only thing that we need to do is make sure that the starting temperature of the print is 220. So if it's anything other than 220 here, make sure to change it to 220. And re-slice the temperature tower and now we're ready to print. So let's print this out and see how it turns out. So now that we've got the temperature tower printed out, we have to interpret what we see. 
Sometimes, depending on the filament, you need to look carefully to see which zone looks best. The differences can be quite subtle, so you have to look carefully. So what do you need to look for? Well, first of all, you need to visually inspect the temperature tower. If the purpose of the print you're going to do is not functional, and the only thing that you're concerned with is the cosmetic look of the print, then a visual inspection is enough. Look for the zone that looks the best and print at that temperature. Now, my recommendation is that if two zones look equally good, print using the zone that is at the higher temperature. The reason is this. All else being equal, the zone with the higher temperature will probably yield better layer adhesion and therefore be a stronger print. So if two zones look identical, always print at the highest possible temperature. If the part that you're going to print is more functional, then choose the higher temperature zone that still looks good enough. Because if the part is functional, you may not care at all if it's aesthetically great looking. You may be more concerned with how strong it is and you should therefore print at the highest possible temperature. Overall, pay attention to things like bridging capabilities, how small features are printed, as well as overhangs. Paying close attention to these things will help you maximize both the look and the strength of your 3D print. So that's it. This is how you set up, print, and interpret a temperature tower. It's really an easy thing to do and a very important part of 3D printing. So if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you click on the subscribe button and the notification bell. Also, give this video a like so that it has a better chance of being picked up by the YouTube algorithm. Doing these things would be very helpful to me and will cost you absolutely nothing. Also, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I make it a point of doing my best to answer all questions and I will always respond to comments. So until next time, take care and happy 3D printing. Bye-bye.